Hi everyone, my name is Alex Leo and uh, I'm a consultant general and colorectal surgeon. I work uh, at the London Northwest NHS uh, Trust. Today I'm going to uh, give you some thoughts on the adoption of new tools to early diagnose and monitoring obstetric and sphincter injuries. So as you know, this is a quite a common and very important complication during the vaginal uh, deliveries. Uh, and are actually the commonest cause of anal incontinence in uh, women of reproductive age. So obviously, if we predict uh, uh, these anal sphincter injuries, we may improve then uh, the uh, patient quality of life. So that's why it's really important uh, to uh, focus on this target. How can we do that? That uh, over the last uh, two dec uh, decades, we saw a rapid development of new diagnostic tools such as portable manometers, ultrasound scans, and many others. These are all tools that are very important for the surgeon or for the obstetrician to improve the, di the diagnosis and the, the accuracy in the preventing and monitoring the uh, sphincter injuries. So today I'm going to focus on what particular uh, tool which I encountered for the first time uh, nearly five years ago, and which was promoted by the company as a very um, you know, quick, reliable uh, instrument that could actually help us a lot uh, for uh, this aim. So I'm now going to present you a small uh, video, which is a, a short clip that uh, we made at St. Mark's Hospital a few years ago. And in this video, I'm going to basically to introduce you this instrument and so we can uh, actually see how this works. So this is a sort of a protocol that we designed and I'll show you in practice now how it happens. This is the, the device, so the THD Anopress, the main device connected to, to um, uh, the um, probe. And this can be connected by a Bluetooth to any laptop. So you've got the software that the company will provide for you. And this is actually the test in itself. So patient in a usual position on the uh, left side, we introduce the catheter and you can already uh, uh, see the uh, enocutaneous reflex. And we wait for the resting pressure curve to stabilize and we push a green button and this records uh, a few seconds of this resting pressure. You can set up actually how long do you want to record the resting pressure, you may record 15 seconds, 10 seconds, this is probably up to you. Then we ask the patient to do a nice uh, uh, and squeeze as strong as the patient can and as long as the patient can. Again here, will you decide how many squeezes you want to take and how many um, recording you want to take. Personally, I prefer to take uh, one single uh, main squeeze pressure and you see during the uh, red phase all this uh, endurance. I ask then the patient to do two involuntary uh, squeezes, asking the patient to cough, and then we record the uh, strain pressure, um, pushing the uh, blue button, and you see that on the screen. So quite very, um, I should say, straightforward uh, procedure, very easy to perform. This is just a template. You see the nice uh, line. It records, again, resting pressure, squeeze, and involuntary squeezes. So this is the video that we made. Uh, so I found it very straightforward since uh, uh, the first time I used but uh, obviously uh, we wanted to know something more about this Anopress and that's why we decided together with Miss Caroline Basie and, um, and Mr. Jamie Murphy at St. Mark's Hospital to design some studies to see whether this Anopress uh, works well or not. Uh, so the first study actually was trying to uh, to uh, formulate normative uh, values for this device. This is simply because we realized that we didn't have anything to compare with. So we could do the test, but we didn't know what it was normal and what it was not normal. And considering that this is a newer device, completely different in technology, in design and everything from the usual manometric tests, another kind of these similar investigations, it must have his uh, uh, own uh, normative values. So we designed this uh, study Quite straightforward uh, was a prospective um, evaluation. Uh, we standardized the procedure on the way that I showed you in the video, and we tried to assess the anorectal function in asymptomatic volunteers, so uh, asymptomatic subjects. This is the, uh, the, the, the standardized procedures that I showed you uh, before. And you see here how you get the inner cutaneous reflex and in introduction. Again, it's very important that I show you this because it's actually how the test works. The rest impression between the two green uh, lines, main squeeze, endurance, two involuntary squeeze pressures, and the strain at the hand. You got all the numbers uh, below, 
and all the lines with a single trace, very easy to read at, at the time. So we got 153 asymptomatic subjects recruited. These are just some numbers to present the demographic. But the most important thing is that we finally uh, got the normative values for this machine. So we could actually now compare what is normal to what is abnormal. For the first time, normal range values reported, and we already had the feeling there was a very practical instrument, portable, you could use it at a bedside, well tolerated by the patient, but we needed more. We needed to compare this uh, Anopress to other technologies. And above all, uh, um, at the beginning, we thought that we should have had a look to how this device behaves on um, symptomatic patients. Therefore, we designed another study. Um, and this study here, we basically used the, uh, the, 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 the Anopress uh, in our offices, in our clinics, uh, to see how the, uh, the Anopress was, to see whether the Anopress was able to detect uh, the anorectal uh, dysfunction. So here we go, the usual procedure, same practice, the same uh, methodology, uh, patient on the same position, introduce the catheter, do the test. These are where all patients who were um, referred to St. Mark's Hospital and there were all patients with a severe anal incontinence. We had 60 of them, again, some demographic important. As we know, uh, and as expected, we had uh, uh, most of them uh, with mixed fecal incontinence, 61%. So if you see this table, which I apologize is quite busy, but just to understand uh, that if you uh, compare the normal values that we obtained from the first study to the values that we got in a symptomatic patient, and then there was a significant difference uh, between uh, these values here on uh, all the, the pressures that we analyzed. And um, yeah, just a couple of examples. So you see here, very low resting pressure. The squeeze pressure is almost inexistent. Here again, resting pressure very low, nearly to zero. So you can already see from the single uh, trace and from the numbers that there was a significant difference. Uh, therefore, we could conclude that the Anopress is definitely able uh, to uh, detect the reduction in pressures, as we expected. Again, it was a very practical instrument, well tolerated by the patient. And the most, thing, I mean, the most important thing is that it was able to detect anal sphincter dysfunction. So once we've done that, obviously, we wanted to compare this newer um, machine with uh, something that we use um, uh, to, uh, to, to, to practice in, uh, in our clinics, which was the standard water diffuse manometer. So you see here the two instruments on, on the same ring. What was the aim? That the aim was to compare objectively in a very qualitative way these two. technologies to compare the, to the patient and device tolerability and to compare the manometric result uh, data. So again, this is, was a, a prospective uh, randomized uh, crossover studies. Uh, we uh, performed this test on the uh, same patient in the same clinical session, randomizing which um, instruments are using first and which cutter they're using first. This was performed in a very standardized way and we used this time the BAS uh, at insertion and during uh, the procedure. So uh, here the couple of slides where I put uh, two tables. These are uh, our qualitative analysis of uh, these two uh, objects, of these two uh, devices. So on the first one, the one that I'm showing you now uh, is the comparison of the devices. So you see on the left uh, quadrant, the uh, standard water perfuse manometry and on the right side, the THD Anopress. So uh, the Anopress is uh, light, it's wireless, portable, nice colored single trace. On the other side, the water perfuse can uh, give you high resolution. But the Anopress, again, was very easy to use and the price is much, much uh, lower. Um, so it's nearly a fourth of the water perfuse uh, metometry. If you're going to have a look uh, to uh, the, the qualitative comparison of the catheters, Again, you got an air-filled catheter with Anopress, which basically uh, remove all the water problems that we used to have uh, uh, for who has experience. Uh, I'm sure that they tried it many times uh, while using the water perfuse uh, machine. Very easy to use. Calibration takes only a few seconds. Push the button, 
few seconds is calibrated without doing any particular maneuvers. Um, we appreciated the uh, membrane, which was pneumatic, and he, this pneumatic membrane basically gives you the, um, the average from the whole surface uh, of the, the, the cutter then instead of only few space sensors. It's a stationary um, um, catheter. He stay only in the inner canal, which is easy to introduce, easy to do the, 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 the test. And so this is a mainly our, uh, uh, this, this, our qualitative analysis and comparison between the two devices, but we'll talk uh, more. Uh, we got here just some demographics. So as you see, uh, we managed to uh, basically randomize 50% of the patients and we had a quite a uh, dishomogeneous uh, cohort so with a, a part of male, a part of female, 30 and 30, to see whether there were any differences between the two genders as well. Very important, the time to pressure. So this is what's much quicker on an anoprex again, but simply because, as I will show you later on this presentation, uh, you don't need to insert the catheter in the rectum, so it's much easier. You put it there and you already have your pressure. You wait for a few seconds while it stabilizes the curve, and as soon as you see the curve stabilized, then you can start recording and do your test. With the water perfuse, I agree, as actually at the international consensus uh, as shown many times, that actually the timing is longer because you need to insert the catheter inside the up to the rectum, then slowly, slowly withdraw the catheter, find the right place, wait for the patient to to uh, have uh, uh, the time uh, to accommodate the device, and then you can start recording. So the time is much longer. On the BAS, very similar, uh, but again, there was a statistical significance, uh, and the, the ANOPES seems to be better tolerated. Very busy slide, just uh, to show you that when we compare the manometric results, there was a nice correlation between the two devices. So the ANOPES correlate well with the water perfuse manometry. So, we already mentioned many of the advantages that we noticed during the several studies that we made with uh, these new uh, devices. Very easy to use, a small, a light, portable. Uh, it's a wireless, you can connect it to any laptop, very quick calibration. You don't have the problems with the water leakage. It's a very quick test to use it. And above all, you can bring it to the patient aside. Easy to use, uh, was very uh, appreciated by the patient as well. So just a couple of slides to uh, um, just remark what I just said about the cover. This, this is a water perfuse uh, um, uh, uh, system and the water perfuse cover. This. As you see, you introduce the cover that with the old balloon that you got at the top and goes all up to the rectum. To, uh, and you will take the, the pressures down to the inner canal with the sensors. So obviously the introduction is more... Um, uncomfortable for the patients because you need to go up to the rectum instead the anus. This is what happens with the anopress. His introduction is, yes, it's, it's true that it's a little bit thicker, but it's very smooth. You go only in the anal canal and it basically makes the job. Uh, here again, this is where the water perfuse system take the measurements. So if you uh, look at the uh, right side of the screen you see here these uh, dots there are the space sensors where uh, the water perfuse manometry takes the measures and the pressure from the inner canal on top of that you got the 7.5 centimeters doing nothing for some reasons and then you got the balloon on the top so you go a lot of the way up in the rectum and here we are why the patient had more discomfort with this the, the test compared to the anopress and this is why it's much easier to use one of the reasons why it's, uh, i found easier to use the anopress so it's basically uh, when i use the the, the anopress it's like your finger you put your finger in in the in a canal and you do your digital rectal examination you have already the feeling of the pressures and the anopress it just translates this feeling in numbers and uh, traces so here again, as you can see, uh, if you compare the water perfuse manometry, so you see the space sensors, and this is the old surface of the anopress, which takes an average of the pressures. So very easy, straightforward from there. It's like you take uh, the, the pressures basically from the, uh, your car uh, uh, wheel, you put the gun on, push the button, and you got uh, the pressure from there. Disadvantages, well, I had to mention this. As someone has said, doesn't like it, the fact that the anopress give you disposable catheters. I actually prefer. 
Uh, the maximum 10 minutes per catheter, for some reasons, the company made these limits in the catheters. I have to say that we, uh, between me and the other collaborators uh, who uh, use the Anopress, we never needed more than 10 minutes to do the, the, the test, but uh, I definitely put this on a disadvantage uh, slide. You cannot measure the inner canal. I thought you actually shouldn't do it with a, a, with a manometer test. You should do it with the Android in all the sound scan. Uh, this is actually uh, been showed several times. And above all, you need to measure the inner canal as a single functional entity, which is quite controversial. I know many physiologists like the, the old uh, style water perfuse manometry because you can take a lot of measures from uh, every single side of the inner canal. I actually prefer, as a surgeon, as a clinician, I prefer to see the inner canal as a single functional entity. Knowing where the pressures are abnormal in the inner canal won't change my clinical approach. So in summary, we, for the first time, uh, we showed the uh, norm, first normative values. We demonstrated the Hanopress detects sphincter function. We compared this to the water perfuse manometry and we listed the all advantages. The Hanopress has overtaken many other disadvantages of the traditional manometry and it can be easily used in outpatient department to diagnose and prevent uh, sphincter injuries.